Welcome back to Get Google Ready for 2025, where I'm gonna take you through everything that you need to know so that you can successfully set up and optimize all of the Google Ads campaigns that you'll be needing to use in 2025. Now, before we get into setting up your campaigns, one of the core activities that you'll need to get right is completing your keyword research. As you may very well be aware that a lot of Google Ads campaigns are built upon this whole concept of you selecting keywords to target your ads. Now, if you're new to Google Ads, you may not be aware that over the last couple of years, there has been some really significant changes to the way that Google uses its key match targeting. And that's why you can hear some conflicting information about how the keyword match types in Google work. So before I take you through the process of how to complete your keyword research, what I do wanna confirm is that Google now targets the meaning of the keyword phrase, not just the keywords that you enter. And that is a really, really important concept to understand. And it is gonna be more and more important because not only is this changing with inside of Google Ads, what is also changing in the search landscape is that the way that people actually conduct searches will be different and it'll be a lot more conversational based where people will start with an initial Google search and then it'll move into like a chatbot feature. And that's why Google is now moving over to this meaning or intent based keyword targeting. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna jump into a screen share where I'm gonna firstly take you through a quick guide of how the match types work in Google. But what I also wanna confirm with you is that once you complete your initial keyword research, that is not the end of optimizations and your refinements that you'll make inside of Google Ads. That's why I wanna give you access to my Google Ads optimization checklist. And this is a checklist which you can use for all of the different Google Ads campaigns you're gonna be using. And it also lets you know how you can go through and continue to refine your keyword targeting. And if you wanna get access to my updated Google Ads optimization checklist so that you know exactly what you need to be doing inside of Google Ads, every single week. All you need to do is to follow the link in the description below and you can get free access to my Google Ads optimization checklist. So with all that said, let's jump into a screen share and remember, I'm gonna take you through two things. Firstly, we're gonna have a brief discussion on how keyword targeting works inside of Google Ads and then I'll take you through that step-by-step -step process of completing your keyword research for your Google Ads campaigns. All right, before I take you into the step-by-step -step process of completing your keyword research, it's important that I take you through the different keyword match types. Remember what I said that this has drastically changed with the change being that Google now works on this intent basis. So previously, if you were to have an exact match keyword, and if the keyword that you're targeting was furniture store, so for the keyword furniture store, historically for exact match, it would only appear if they had searched furniture store in that order. If they have searched store furniture, it wouldn't work. But remember, it's targeting the same meaning. So even if it was home furnishing store or stores that I can buy furniture, and it could even be interrelated terms like that. So couch stores, dining room table stores, because it's got the meaning of furniture. So anything that Google relates to furniture would appear inside of that exact match. And then it just builds out from there, obviously phrase match. Now I don't, use phrase match anymore. Now, if you've got some functioning campaigns that are working well on phrase match, I'm not saying to change it. What I'm saying for new campaigns, I'm only using exact match and broad match. The reason being is because phrase match used to have a difference in that basically phrase match was similar to exact match, except it could appear on any order. Whereas now because exact match, it can appear in any order and it's got relative meanings to it. It doesn't have any difference now. So it's phrase match and broad match. For broad match, broad match, it's just even broader. So it's not just the same meaning it's also words that are related to that. So that's the two keyword phrases that I'd be using, match types, exact match or broad match. I generally start with broad match and the reason for why we start with broad match is because there is so much changing within the search landscape. Even as we speak right now, 15% of all Google searches are brand new in that they've never been searched before. And also because search is getting to become more conversational. That's why I recommend that we have one to two broad match keywords that have longer keyword tails. So never do like home decor or furniture store. You'd want to do larger keywords, at least three words, but ideally four or five, and then you build it out with the exact match. So that's an update on how the keyword match types work. And right now let's jump to another screen show and show you the step-by-step -step process of how to complete your keyword research inside of Google Ads. Let's now go through the step-by-step -step process of how to complete your keyword research inside of Google Ads using using the keyword planner. Now, what we're looking at here is this is the end result of what we wanna have, where we've got our keywords broken into different campaigns, different ad groups, and different keywords. Now, the place that we start with 
I recommend with all of your keyword research that you want to start with about three or four different keywords that you know that you want to add as your initial theme. So when you've got that and you can just write that down in a Google Notes or in a doc, just three or four different keyword ideas that you can use to enter into the keyword planner. So when you're inside of Google Ads and I'm inside of a Google Ads training profile in here, where you need to go to is you need to go into your tools, into planning, and then your keyword planner. So just as a reminder, you go into tools, planning, keyword planner, and then you want to choose discover new keywords. And then this is where you add in those initial keywords. So what I'll do, obviously, I've already got the end result here, but I'll just go through and just add in a couple of different keywords that we initially started with. And we're going to add these in here. Now, you can add up to 10 different keywords. And the other thing that I would recommend that is if you also start with adding your website. And for this example, this is the website that we're going to be creating a Google Ads campaign for. So we add that in through there. So you've got your initial keywords and your website in through here. Then you go through and click on get results. And what this does is let me just explain some different elements of what we're seeing in the screen through here is that initially with the keywords is what you'll see is you'll see the keywords that you provided. So these are the keywords that you gave Google. Then it gives you some different keyword ideas. And these are based off similar keywords to what you're looking at through what you provided. And if you go down to the bottom, you can see here that you just got, you know, in this example, we've got over 132 different ideas. What you want to be looking at in through here is when you're looking at these columns is obviously Google gives you the average monthly searches. But then what you can also see is you can also see what's been happening over the previous months. Now, I do need to stress that this is what's been happening in the past, not in the future. So it's giving you data based off what's been happening over the previous 12 months. And then you can also see uh, you know, the three month change, year on year change. Now, when it comes to competition, Google gives three levels, low, medium and high. Now, as a very, very general rule, the lower the competition, the lower the bid and the lower the CPC bid. So that's the amount that you'll have to pay per click. And when you're looking at the top of the page, versus the top of the page high range is we're talking here, low range is positions two, three, and four. Top of the page is the position number one. So what you can do through here is that you try to want to be looking at now what I really look at with our keyword research, remembering the way that we're looking at structuring our Google Ads search campaigns is we're looking at selecting two or three broad match keywords that have multiple words in them, ideally more than three. Remembering, as we said, that now Google targets the meaning of the keyword phrase, not just the keywords that you're mentioning in your keyword target. So more words helps to give Google greater context of what you're actually wanting to search and what you're actually wanting to target. Now, because we're going to be having a couple of broad match keywords, I'm not too worried about the average monthly searches because we know the way that Google works is it'll go beyond the selections. So I'm looking for two types of keywords. One, I'm looking for two or three, which are going to be my exact match keywords. And then if there's any other keywords, which I know are just highly, highly relevant, I may also select them as an exact match keyword. Before we get to that, what I do want to show you is over here, you can also refine your keywords. So let's just say that for this one, if you don't know Bali, our villas are in Seminyak, but Google is also saying, look, do you want to target Changu and Kuda? I'm going to exclude them. And the reason for that is because I just know that they're not relevant. If you know Bali, like those locations on a Google map, which is what Google's picking up, they're not far away, but they're very, very different locations with very, very different markets. And then what you can also do, you can also look to remove your brand or other brands. And then also as well, depending on what your initial keywords are that you are adding in there, you'll have all different options to be able to refine your keywords. If you add these in or exclude them, you can see that Google is changing the amount of keywords that are available. So what you want to do through here is I firstly start with the keywords that I added. Now, the ones that we've got in through here, as a reminder too, for things like one bedroom and one bedroom, whether it's spelt out or it's the number, Google is going to see them as the same. So you don't need to include both of those, but there's no harm in, in including both of those. And then we also go down and have a look at are there any other keywords which are relevant for looking at targeting. Once you go through and make all of your selections, as I said, you can select more, but that's the process you go through. I'm just looking at the data, looking if there are ones which have a higher competition, I do go through and have a look at the top of page and lower page of bid to see whether it's worthwhile. With that one, because it doesn't have a super, super high volume, I'm happy and those CPC ranges are within my budget. If they were outside of my budget, I would remove them. And that's where you do have to make some initial decisions, which is going to be best for your business or your client's business. So once you've gone through and selected all of your keywords, what you 
you want to do is you want to add keywords to create your plan. You can see here, now we've got the notification that these keywords were added to our plan. You then want to go up into, you can go up into either your forecast or your saved keywords. And then what you want to do from here is you want to go through and download them either into a CSV or a Google Sheet. Now I have done this through a Google Sheet. So if I go through and open up this Google Sheet, you can see that's what we start with. We start with just a list of all of the data and the estimated clicks, estimated impressions. And what I do is I go through and make the sheet look like this. Now, the way that I've done that is that I'll go through and add in some new columns. So a campaign and an ad group. So I'll get rid of the columns that I don't need. And then what I do from there is basically I add in my campaign, my ad group and my keyword. Then I've got all the average monthly searches, competition, all of that information in through there. And then what I spend some time doing is I just break these out into different keyword themes. Remembering what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to have one keyword theme. So we've only got one keyword theme per ad group. So you can see through here, I've got my one bedroom villa campaign, my two bedroom villa campaign, and then just a general campaign. And I've got some different ad groups based around those different campaigns. And from that, we've now completed our keyword research. I do keep it in this sheet as well, because sometimes if you're not doing this for your business, but you're doing it for a client, you may need to get some approval. So I've always found that this is a really nice tidy sheet that you can forward off to your clients so they can see a bit of an idea of what keywords you're gonna be targeting, what the searches are, and what the competition areas and what the CPC bids are. And that's how you complete keyword research in Google Ads. And that's the step-by-step -step process that you use to complete your Google Ads keyword targeting. And remember, if you want that extra help with how to optimize your Google Ads campaigns correctly, all you need to do is to follow that link in the description below so you can get access to my Google ads optimization checklist. And if you want to make sure that you don't miss out when I release any more videos in my get Google ready playlist for 2025, make sure that you don't only subscribe, but you also turn on that notification bell. And if you want to watch all of the available videos in this playlist that are live at the moment, go through and watch this playlist right here. See you next time.